All right guys, so I just got the offer back from CarMax for my 2016 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack Shaker. And I have to say, it's actually quite a bit higher than I was expecting. So they offered me- How's it going guys? It's K-Cars, and today we're gonna be taking my stolen Dodge Challenger Scat Pack to CarMax. Let's go ahead and hop in. As you guys know, a while ago this car actually did get stolen. If you haven't seen those videos where I go over the detailed story of what actually happened, make sure to go check those videos out. I posted those a few months back. But anyways, like I said, today we're going to be taking the car to CarMax to get this thing appraised and see if they actually know that it was stolen. And I want to see if it actually like showed up in the car facts or anything like that. So I'm currently actually at a Dodge Jeep dealership right now. I just got back after speaking to one of their sales representatives about trading this car in for a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. As you guys know, I have been thinking about selling this car and trading it for either a Camaro ZL11 LE or a Wrangler 392. So at this dealership right now, they actually did not say anything about the car being stolen, but of course they did question the aftermarket exhaust that I have on this car. So of course, if you guys didn't know, I do have long tube headers, callus mid pipes, and a mid muffler delete. Now, of course, in this state, every vehicle is required to have catalytic converters. Unfortunately, if I wanted to trade the car in here, they would give me a much lower value just because of the fact that it doesn't have cats. Apparently, right now, there's a shortage of catalytic converters. And they said in order to replace the exhaust, it would be $7,000 just because of how expensive catalytic converters are right now. I figured it probably wouldn't be a good idea to trade this car in here at this dealership but I'm assuming any other you know, car buyer or dealership in this state is gonna notice the same thing or at least question it and you know, drop the price by $7,000 as well. So of course that's unfortunate, but let's go ahead and head to CarMax and see what they tell us. Alrighty guys, well we have made it here to CarMax as you can see right there. I'm actually pretty interested to see what kind of price they're going to give me and to see if they actually will look for the catalytic converters and also if they're going to know that the car was stolen. I don't even know if it says it in the Carfax or not, but I guess we will find out today. And like I said, the dealership did not say anything about the car being stolen, just the cats. So see how this goes. And I'm not going to be taking the camera inside with me because I know sometimes CarMax does not like people with cameras. So we're gonna keep the camera in here and I will definitely update you guys as we go. So let's see what happens. All right guys, so we're here at CarMax. I just gave all the information about the Challenger to the people inside. And I guess they're gonna go take a look at it, see what it needs. And hopefully they don't notice that it does not have catalytic converters or they don't say anything about it being stolen. But since we do have some time before I get a call back to actually get their actual number that they're gonna give me, I wanna take some time and actually walk around their lot right here and show you guys what they have because they do have some pretty interesting vehicles, including a GT500 that I wanna show you guys, as well as some Camaros and this nice Gladiator right here as well. So this one is actually the Mojave trim level right here, as you can see. And one thing I do like about this trim is that it does have this little um, like hood scoop. Now the 392 Wrangler also has the, like the same style hood scoop, but I do believe that it's called something else. It's like the air guide or something like that where like it filters out the water. So if you like submerge the Jeep, it won't actually get water inside of the engine bay. So similar, but I don't think it's the exact same thing, but I could be wrong about that. So overall, I do like the whole like stance. I'm not really a fan of the soft top on any kind of Jeeps, to be honest. I think it kind of just looks a little bit cheap, but overall I do like how this Mojave looks. But of course I do like the 392 Wrangler a whole lot more. So I wanted to go ahead and walk over there and show you guys the GT500 and a few other performance cars that they have here as well. I did also want to mention that a few months ago, I did fill out their online appraisal form and they gave me an offer of 34,900, which in my opinion, I think that's very good. But of course they don't know that it has a pretty good sized dent on the passenger fender. They don't know that it's been stolen and they don't know that it doesn't have catalytic converters. So if they find that out today, then it could drop the price significantly. So definitely interested to see what they're going to come up with let's go ahead and walk over to the gt500 so right here is the gt500 that i was talking about they also have this gt and i believe a v6 mustang right here now this gt500 as you guys know you know dual clutch super fast car i've seen this car at tx2k many times 
super fast and this one is going for 101,000 almost 102 of course obviously 5.2 liter v8 supercharged and i believe these make i think 760 horsepower so of course they had to one up the zr1 by going five more so super incredible car in my opinion i definitely like that they did include the dual clutch transmission for these i think that'll definitely improve those shift times of course and here in the back we do have Michelin 315 tires. I wonder what kind of like actual tires these are. Pilot Sport 4S. Okay, cool. So for sure you would need very grippy tires for a car like this with 760 horsepower. But also I do like the spoiler that they have on here on the back. Definitely helps with downforce. Now I feel like the Mustangs are more of a straight line car instead of like a road course type of car. So it's more meant to go in the straight line in my opinion, I think. So the spoiler would definitely help for going around turns and driving around a track with actual turns. But yeah, I do think that it's a great all around car, but I think for the most part, it's meant to be more of a straight line car, just like the Challenger. So huge fan of the GT500. Of course, you also got the GT 5.0 right there, as well as the either the V6 or the EcoBoost Mustang right here. Not too sure on this one exactly, but also wanted to walk over here show you guys this camaro ss which looks really nice i not really a fan of the wheels on this one but i think it looks good other than that i would definitely go with black wheels now to be honest on these new camaros i'm not really a big fan of the front end redesign i like how they kept the zl1s with the kind of like the old style so for these new camaros i definitely do like the zl1 but not really any of the trim levels below that i do like the rear end though now this one's going for 45k Camaro SS, so of course 6.2 liter, naturally aspirated. I did drive one of these um, down in Texas whenever I was there for TX2K22. Very fast car, super quick, you know, traction was good and all that. This one is also a manual transmission, which is cool. Now here we got 275s on this one. Now these are actually 10 speed automatics if you get the automatic instead of the manual, which is what I drove. I have to say, it definitely did feel like that 10 speed transmission the gears were super short in that i feel like it was always like constantly shifting so the advantage of that is that you're pretty much always in the power band which i like guys yeah, so i just got the offer back from carmax from a 2016 dodge challenges cat pack shaker and i have to say it's actually quite a bit higher than i was expecting so carmax offered me thirty-three thousand dollars for this thing which if you compare it to the dealership that I was just at earlier today, they offered me 28,000. So that's a $5,000 increase when you compare CarMax to the dealership offer. Biggest factor here, I think is honestly the exhaust because CarMax did not ask me anything about aftermarket exhaust modifications or anything like that. And the dealership of course did, they noticed it right away. So the only thing that CarMax took into account was this dent right here on the passenger fender. And of course, we all knew about that. That's from when the car got stolen. Now, one other thing about CarMax is that they also didn't know that the car was stolen. So I guess it's not really on the Carfax, which makes sense because there was no insurance claim. So yeah, I mean, that all makes sense. It all plays out. But I am pretty surprised that they did not ask anything about the aftermarket exhaust or anything like that. They kind of just did a quick walk around of the car. And of course, they obviously saw that the passenger fender had to be repaired. So I mean, yeah, 33,000 definitely does seem like a pretty good deal. You know, I probably would be be able to get more out of this thing if i sold it to a private party just as a private seller i do think that would be you know a better deal but it would also be i think a bigger hassle because here at carmax you just bring your car here get your appraisal and then they give you a check for that amount so it seems super easy here at carmax and like i said also they did offer me five thousand dollars more than the dealership did that comes the hard part of actually deciding what i actually want to do with this car as you guys know, I've had this thing for the past six years, and I think I definitely am ready to get into something else. And, you know, I really have been thinking hard about getting that Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392, especially with that extreme recon package that comes with the 35 inch off-road tires completely stock. And I believe it's also like three and a half inches taller over a standard Rubicon, which is pretty impressive for something that you can get from the factory with a factory warranty, especially because you can get it with the same exact engine that this car has, 6.4 liter V8 392. The Wrangler actually has 470 horsepower, so 15 less than this car had stock, but still, it's a Jeep. You don't really need all that power in an off-road vehicle, but I think it's just awesome to have, you know, an awesome Jeep like that, that comes with 35s from the factory, 
and a big V8, big 392 with 470 horsepower with, you know, four wheel drive, obviously with a Jeep. So I definitely think it would be a very fun vehicle to have, you know, a good addition to the XJ that I currently have. And I really do feel like I would be able to enjoy the Jeep more than I currently enjoy this car because I would just be able to drive it more, go explore some new trails. And, you know, with this car, if I want to take it to the track, it's a lot more expensive and I have to, you know, drive farther away to actually get to the nearest track as well. So that's kind of my reasoning for wanting to get the Wrangler 392. But, you know, obviously those Jeeps are very expensive in my opinion. I think base MSRP is like 80K. And, you know, a lot of dealerships are doing huge markups on those Jeeps because, you know, who doesn't want a V8 Jeep Wrangler, right? And one other thing to think about with those is that Dodge announced that 2023 will be the last year of their V8s. So, of course, the 392 is included in that. And they will be replaced by, I believe they're calling it the Hurricane, like the TME G6 or something like that. It's going to be an inline six twin turbo, I believe. Now, it will have more horsepower than this car right here. But still, I would rather have a lower horsepower V8 rather than a, you know, inline six twin turbo with more horsepower if it's going to replace the V8. I would rather have the V8. Also, if you guys are familiar with the Jeeps, you all know that the Wranglers do hold their value very well, specifically with the Wrangler 392. Those, if you can find one used, they're going for like, you know, almost 20K over the sticker price. The Wrangler 392 definitely would be a good investment, especially since Dodge is discontinuing their V8s after the year 2023. Now, I have seen the Wrangler 392s for sale for over $100,000. Now, you could literally buy one brand new, order it for MSRP plus, you know, taxes, titles, registration, all that extra fees. You could get it for that price like do a special order on it and then drive it sell it used for like 20k over sticker price it was insane in my opinion now that's not what i would do i would definitely want to enjoy my wrangler 392 if i did go ahead and buy one but i'm just saying that a wrangler 392 right now is a very good investment now of course i think any kind of v8 sports car right now would be a good investment but when you compare the Wrangler 392 to a Challenger's Cat Pack, that's a 2016 model year, I do think the Jeep would be a much better investment just because the 2023 is supposedly the last year of the V8s from Dodge and Jeep, of course. So for that reason, I do think that the Wrangler 392 will appreciate much more than these cars will right here. Like I said, they're already going used for 20 to 30K over sticker. So it's very insane if you ask me. Duffy would be a pretty sad time on the channel because I've had this car for the past six years. This car started my whole entire YouTube channel. And as you guys know, I also do have a Jeep Cherokee XJ, which I'm never planning to get rid of that car. But like I said, this car started my whole YouTube channel. So it definitely will hurt to kind of let this car go. But I do think the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 would give us some more exciting content. And I really hope you guys would enjoy that kind of content as well. But I am really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this situation. Would you rather me buy the Jeep Wrangler 392 and give you guys that kind of off-roading content and content with that Jeep? Or would you rather have me keep this car? Now, me personally, I am leaning towards getting the Wrangler 392. And I also did put up a poll on my YouTube community section and I was asking you guys, which would you rather see? The Wrangler 392, the Camaro ZL1 1LE, or if you would rather just have me keep this car. Now, 40% of you voted for the Wrangler, 30% voted for this car, and 30% for the Camaro. So most of my viewers would rather see the Wrangler 392, which I'm also leaning towards that vehicle as well. But I definitely am interested to hear your comments. So definitely drop those down in the comment section below. And like I said, 33,000 was the offer from CarMax for this car. 28,000 was from the dealership from Jeep and Dodge that I was just at earlier today. So $5,000 difference in terms of the trade-in value or buying value for CarMax here. I personally do think that 33K for this car is a good deal. So definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you guys have any questions or comments, also drop those down in the comment section below. If you guys have any video suggestions for videos you would like to see in the future, also drop those down in the comment section section below and if you guys like this video or found it entertaining make sure to like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching